you know how some people, like, they really can't sing? Like, they think they can, but they don't really push the sound, like, from deep within their, their diaphragm. I think, I think art can be similar to that. Like, there's some artists who are really good technically, but they're not truly making art. They're not really allowing those ideas to emanate from deep within their core. It has to come from within their core. And so, naturally, I begin asking myself, like, what is at my core? Like, if I want to make good art, it's got to it's gotta be from, from my, my essence. And it has to be sincere. And I'm reminded of a story. Back in 1985, my, my first day of kindergarten, I walk in, the classroom is like, it's huge, man. I was so happy. I walk in, I sit down, and everybody's singing the same song. I don't know the words, so I'm thinking, like, am I late? Like, did I miss a few days of school? And what it was is that they were singing the ABCs. Like, I didn't know my ABCs. I didn't even, I didn't even know English. That pretty much defines who I am in this country. Like, I love this country. This is my country. There are many like it, but this one is mine. But sometimes I'm reminded that, you know, I'm really, I'm not from here. Like, I'm, I'm from here. But barely. Uh, what, what happened is, is my dad decided one day uh, to bring his three young children and his pregnant wife from Mexico into the United States. I was born American by just a few months. Like, had he waited just a few months, I would be born Mexican. And that idea has never escaped me. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm American. I love being here. You know, but even just the way I speak, you can hear the Spanish in my tongue. Y como hablo el español, también se me escucha el inglés. And so it's like, I'm not really accepted over there either. It's, it, it's a strange duality is what it is, man. And so, okay, well, have, that's what's at my core. But how do I make art about it? And, and so I thought, well, and I knew it was a good idea because it surprised me. I was like, why, why don't I just use the actual Rio Grande? To make art. The Rio Grande is the river that separates Mexico from the United States, uh, Mexico from Texas. So instead of making an image like, like art of the Rio Grande, like do the wildlife, like maybe do a person crossing the river, instead of doing something cliche, why don't I just make a work of art that kind of hides the idea but use the actual materials from the river? So that was the idea. I went down to Roma, Texas. And for those of you that think the border is not secured, I went down, I filled up an empty container with water, I grabbed some branches. Within like two minutes, there was a, it was a speedboat, like a border patrol that came by. Um, and when I went back out to my truck, the same thing, there was another, uh, there, there was a truck, a border patrol truck. Like those guys are on point. Uh, try going down to the Rio Grande. Uh, it was like, for me, it was, it was awesome because I had gone over the international bridges, but I had never been down at the riverbank. Um, so it was pretty, pretty amazing for me. I take these materials back home. I wrap the branches in foil. Um, stuck them on a grill next to some fajitas. Had me some tacos. And about 20 to 30 minutes later, you unwrap the foil. And those branches, what happens is that they become charcoal. Like Charcoal is one of the first art media. Like 30,000 years ago in the caves in Chauvet in Lascaux, Human beings were making art with charcoal. And here I am, 30,000 years later. Um, but still, like, what do I make? Right? It's got to emanate from the core. And so I thought, I'm trying to communicate the idea, yes, of transgression, but I'm, I'm, of migration. I'm also trying to show how positive the Hispanic, the Latino community can be because... I mean, oftentimes, like the reason I don't feel 100% like I'm accepted here is because of stereotypes. So how do we begin to chip away at these stereotypes? And so I thought, you know what, I need to, I need to have uh, images showing positivity, prosperity, um, intellect. And, and what I did was I selected a group of people to draw. I selected DACA recipients. DACA is Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival. Now, I've been an educator for about nine years. So I was teaching high school kids before DACA. And it's hard to do that because you're telling them like stay in school, go to college, and you know damn well there, there is no path for them. Like, 
and there's some of the best kids you will ever meet. Um, you know, DACA provided hope for these kids. Uh, they, they had to pay $480 biannually, um, no criminal record. And the reason they get DACA is so that they can work. Most of them are going to college. It's like this, this is what I'm trying to say about the Hispanic community is that there are, there's a lot of good and we want to be here. And so what I did is I took this charcoal and I began drawing portraits of these DACA youngsters. And one day after I had finished one of my portraits, I walk into my classroom and I'm getting my lecture ready and I look up and I see a sea of these bright young faces, like attentive. Like they were so engaged. I hadn't even begun to speak and, and they were just waiting. And I realized, you know what? It exists everywhere. It's not just the DACA, what I'm trying to say about the positivity, you know, about the, the, our future. You know, it's, it's that kid that is, you know, first generation, second generation. It's that kid that is on DACA. It is that kid that was born in Mexico but is here illegally but still going to school. The beauty exists within our youth. And so I began drawing mainly my students, these youngsters that are out there. I mean, some of them are in some of the top universities in our country right now. You know, it, it, it's, it, it would surprise you. I know that there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of conflict right now. You know, but knowing these kids, I drew them looking dead on so that you can look in their eyes. I drew them with no, with no connotation towards anything else. I mean, just their faces. Just so that it can let down your guard for a second. And I think when you look in their eyes, you see the humanity in them. That's what I'm hoping to do. It's just really... It's just really a call to your attention that, you know, maybe, maybe they're not all so bad. And after I was done with, with these portraits, I would take that water that I collected from the Rio Grande and I would pour it across these drawings. To me, it was spiritual. It was, it was like a baptism. And I began thinking more about, about the material. It was water and charcoal. You know, 90% of our, more than 90% of our bodies are comprised of three elements. And that is hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. These same materials that I'm using to make these drawings. So if you think about it, from the perspective of the universe, these drawings are no different than our own bodies. If you think about the Big Bang and at one point in time, the universe was no larger than the size of the tip of your thumb. A fraction of a second, there was rapid expansion. And elemental hydrogen formed the first stars. And as those stars exploded, we got the heavier elements. So everything in our universe was at once unified. Even you and I. And... Right now, we're, we're looking for life on other planets. And, you know, I don't know if we deserve to find it until we learn to take care of life here on this one. Art is good at creating dialogue, at starting, at starting a talk. But you know what? Talk is cheap. And so I wonder what else can we do to unify.